Warning, the renegade recruiter is not for the soft, timid, or faint-hearted. If you need permission or seek approval from your mother, spouse, mates in the pub, or anyone else for that matter, this really isn't for you. If any of what you've heard puts you off in the slightest, I advise you not to listen any further. You've been warned. Prepare yourself for the no bullshit, zero fluff. Quick, dirty, and uncensored secrets for any serious recruitment, staffing, and search business owner who wants to earn more money with less work and fewer headaches, without having to kiss ass or bend over backwards to please anyone. He's a relentless and fearless renegade who will stop at nothing to reveal the harsh, unforgiving, and brutal truth about what it really takes to succeed in this business. He's a guy people love to hate and hate to love. It's your host, Terry Edwards. The Renegade Recruiter is unleashed. Hi, it's Drew here and we are joined by Terry Edwards from terryedwards.com. Uh, again, Terry, thank you for joining us. Real pleasure, Drew. Great to be here. Uh, Terry, the reason I wanted to get you here today, uh, get you in front of camera, is because I wanted to talk to you about your up and coming event on the 29th and 30th of November 2017, it's called Lead Genesis, and it reveals how recruitment search owners can attract new clients on demand, increase business revenue and profits without cold calling and without having to have a big network as well. So, I mean, my first question for you is like, why have you decided to put on this event now? Drew, I talk to recruitment and search firm owners every day of the week. And the number one challenge for recruitment to search firm owners worldwide is lack of new clients. And they don't know how to get new business. And they think that the only way of getting new business is perhaps cold calling, perhaps a bit of networking, uh, perhaps marketing other candidates. But they, have, they don't know there's, there's other things that they can do. So the consequence of this, this constant problem for owners and directors of recruitment search firm is, is they're frustrated. Uh, the consequences of this, they've got consultants who, the, who, who they're paying their monthly wages, but these consultants are underperforming yeah. because the owner doesn't know how to generate business, the consultant doesn't know how to generate business, and, and they use the, type, the, the old methods of you know, cold calling and NPCs and whatever. Um, and honestly, these guys have had enough. I kind of feel that if I don't do something now and show and show owners and directors how to generate leads without cold calling, without begging for business. Um, my concern is that we're going to lose something out of the industry because the, the, the frustration and the annoyance that they're going through right now, um, it's not getting any easier. But it's not their fault if they've never been, been told how to do this. So I kind of figured if I can just help a few guys and get some guys in the room and, and show them exactly what to do. Because it's this problem's not going to go away anytime soon unless they're shown how to do it. Okay, so the, the, the big problem is around getting new business. Yeah. And again, I'll sort of echo what you said. Um, whenever you meet a recruitment and search for Mona, no matter what size they are, so this, this, is, um, this, isn't, this isn't a problem that's unique to a smaller business or a bigger business, no matter where they are in their sort of journey, uh, so a, 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 a startup or a business that's been in, been in operation for 20 years, if you ask them what their, their biggest challenge is, their biggest uh, business headache is, uh, almost without, without exception, around bringing new clients in, bringing new business in. And they know that even though they're doing, doing well, doing six or even seven figures, they know that they will be doing so much better if they could just get in front of more people, more leads, more qualified prospects. Yeah, and I want to really qualify this as well because you talk to a lot of recruitment to search for most and they say, Terry, but I'm really busy. I've got lo a lot of business on now. They tend to come from contingency recruiters who what they're doing is they're working on a numbers game. So they've got the, all these job orders coming in and most of them they would never fill. So it means that 50, 60, 70 percent of the time they're working, they're never going to get paid. However, they're in that situation because they're not able to generate sufficient leads, so they work. They, they only work with clients who work with them on their terms. So ideally, you should only be working clients if they're going to pay you a retainer or they're going to do an exclusive. But if a client is saying to you, yeah, send me through your CVs or resumes and you can compete with half a dozen other recruiters and search firms at the same time, that's kind of pointless. And you should be saying no to that, but most recruitment and search firm owners don't, can't say no to that. The reason they can't say no to that is because they don't know how to 
attract more new business. So I want to be really clear about this. I get you may be busy now working on contingency roles. Um, most of you won't fill. This is really for those guys that want to step up above that and want to generate a ton of leads. So they don't have to work on those contingency roles and they only work on an exclusive or they only work on retainer. And there's more, uh, so much more chance of them filling those roles and, and getting paid for the work that they do. Okay, so lead genesis isn't just about new ways to generate leads, isn't just about getting new business, it's about getting the right kind of business as well. So, it, it, again, you say quite a lot, clients aren't equal, it's about picking, it's about generating enough leads so you can handpick the type of clients that you want to work with. That's right. Is that right? Absolutely right. Because you, so you, you can do this and you can generate a ton of leads and some clients are going to say, well, we're only going to work on contingency and we're only going to pay you 10%. Well, look, let's be clear about it, the clients are entitled to say that. But you don't have to work with them. You can say, no, yeah. I respect that. You want to do that? You just won't be, won't be doing it with me. That's all. That's fine. In fact, let me give you the phone numbers of my main competitors. You can go and waste their time um, rather, rather than mine. But you can't do that unless you've got all these leads coming in. And that's, this is what this is all about. So you can decide who you work with and you can work with the right type of clients, the clients who value what you do, who respect you for what you do, clients who will return your calls. We've all been there, haven't we? You know, as, yeah. as recruiters, where you you call the client. So you might even send through a CV or resume. And I did this, by the way, twenty odd years ago. I'm still waiting for the clients to get back to me. <laughs> and I say client, they weren't really a client. Somebody I spoke to on the phone who said send through some information. But the client is somebody that actually pays your bill. And, and, and working free of charge, um, in my opinion, isn't a particularly good 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 business business model. But most recruiters think that's the only way they can do it. Well, look. On the 29th and 30th, we're going to share with you other ways. So you're only working on retainers, you're only working on inclusive, and you're only working with clients that you want to work with. Big difference between the two. Okay, and again, you said here that the problem is lack of clients, lack of leads, lack of new business inquiries, new business opportunities. This isn't a new problem. No, no. This is something that has uh, been a problem for recruitment search trainers for as long as I've been working with you. Um, but even like beyond that, it's always been an issue. Is this something you see getting worse? The problem itself. The problem. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, I agree. But what are the reasons that it's getting worse now? Why is it that, um, like, you can meet, um, you regularly meet uh, recruitment and search for moments who. Uh, are reasonably successful when they've done well, they've built successful businesses and then what they've noticed and stop back and what they say is that they've seen it get harder and harder to bring new business in and um, so the best case scenario for them is that they plateau and stay as they are. Mm. Um, but perhaps worst case, perhaps more common is that they have to downsize. Mm. Why is it getting worse now? I think, I think there's a number of things, Drew. I think, uh, one, um, there are more and more new entries into the market. Yeah. Anybody can enter the market at any time and literally work from their bedroom and call themselves a recruiter or search consultant. The world in it of itself is getting smaller as well. Anybody in any part of the world can set up a business and go and look for business in another country. It's so easy now if you know what you're doing with, with, uh, with technology. Uh, I think the other factor is that the recruiters are out there, there's an element of fear. So they're thinking, I've got to work at this level with this type of client because there's a scarcity of business out there and if I don't take this bit of, quite frankly, crap business, I'm going to have no business at all. I would say to that, you don't have to work with those crap, lousy clients, you know, and that's your choice, by the way, if you, if you want to work with them, but I want you to remember, it is your choice. It, it, you can also do things differently. You can also um, implement a marketing campaign so you've got a, a, a torrent of warm, hot piping leads coming in on a regular basis that would completely eliminate that, having to work with that lousy crap client who wants to pay you at 10% and wants to pay you six months later, and they seem to think that's okay. You're listening to the Renegade Recruiter Unleashed podcast. For show notes, additional resources, and podcast updates, head over to www.therenegaderecruiter.com. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, it's getting very, very um, uh, challenging out there for recruiters, regardless of your experience as well, you know, and, and 
and a lot of recruiters think, well, if I just compete on price, I get more business. You probably found that doesn't work either. There's a reason for that. We're going to kind of touch that as well. But there's a reason why that, that doesn't work. It's, it's not about competing on price. It's about having this deal flow and having a, uh, an abundance of leads coming in. Okay, so uh, again, lead genesis is you put it together to solve this problem yeah. around not getting in, enough clients. And again, you can find all the details about lead genesis below this video. But uh, again, I want to dig a bit deeper into this. Yeah, sure. What are the implications if uh, there is, if you listen to this now, someone listens to this now and they're having this problem, or any other recruitment search who have this problem, what are the implications if they ignore it further? Or right. Do nothing about it. I mean, you, you, you touched on it a bit there, but yeah, someone sort of dig deeper into yeah. it. Yeah. You probably heard the saying, I think Einstein's credit with this if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. And if you keep doing what you've always done but expect different results, it's a form of insanity. So if what yeah. you're doing right now isn't working, it's fair to say it's not going to work sometime in the future. Um, and if you think it otherwise, is, is a form of insanity. So if you keep doing what you're going to do now, you're going to keep working with those lousy clients, you're going to keep working on, on really low fees, um, you're, going to, you're going to increase your frustration. Uh, you're going to increase the number of underperforming consultants that you're going to have. You're going to increase your dislike for this, this career, this job that you have now. And the fact that you, when you look at it very closely, what you're actually doing is you're working, you're billing to cover the cost of those underperforming consultants. And whenever we speak to recruitment and search firms, when they're doing that, it creates a lot of resentment. So you keep doing what you're doing and that's the implications of what's going to happen. And you'll... In most cases, eventually you'll fall out of love with, with, the, with the whole industry. Um, and you keep doing what you're doing and the smarter recruiters who know the different ways of generating leads other than the half a dozen that most recruiters that use at the moment, they will, the, those smart recruiters will get more of your business, interestingly, at a higher fee as well because they know how to generate leads and, and they know how to create this abundance or this deal flow as we, as we call it. But you don't know what to do because you've always done what you've always done and you've got the results that you've always got. And in a nutshell, it doesn't look too good for the future, quite honestly, Drew. Okay, so you guys that do that. Again, so that's what will happen if you, if you ignore it. But what are the possibilities? Like this? What, if, what happens, what would it give you when you fix this problem and you no longer have to worry about where your next client is coming from? You get the opportunity to handpick the type of clients you work with. What will businesses who do that, what will it look like going forward? Imagine for a second that you walk into your office and it's Monday morning, you walk into your office, you sit down, you turn your computer on, you go to your emails and you've got a load of emails there from prospects who've emailed you wanting you to call them to discuss their recruitment or search needs. Imagine then you go to your calendar, you open your calendar and you see that people have booked into your calendar for a 10 minute telephone meeting to talk about their recruitment or search needs. Just imagine that for a moment. How would you feel? What would that mean to you? Now, I ask you to imagine that because that's exactly what some of your competitors are experiencing right now. Imagine that you never, ever had to cold call again and that you only called clients who knew of you. And when you called them and you gave the name of your organization and your name, they said, hi, good to talk to you. Imagine only working with clients who valued and respected what you did. And you never ever had to negotiate on the fees you said these are our fees we only work on the retainer at the very least exclusive and they said yeah sure and there was no pushback whatsoever come along to lead lead genesis and all the details at the bottom of this page and we're going to show you precisely how to do that so you will never ever cold call again and you will only call clients who at the very least know who you are and in most cases are expecting a call from you so again, Terry, you said that all the details are beneath this video, um, but who, who is Lead Genesis for? So Lead Genesis is, is, is for uh, the experienced recruitment or search firm owner who's, who's been around the block, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, by the way, I have as well, and seen, seen a lot of changes in the industry um, and acknowledges that you know, there's room for improvement. 
Um, it's also for the, the, the rookie um, who's just entered the market and perhaps was a great consultant elsewhere and did pretty well working with somebody else, but find it's when it's your own business not, not doing so well. It's for ambitious, well we call them abnormally ambitious recruitment and search firm owners who are thinking, do you know, we've been at this level for some time now and we want to go to the next level. Uh, this is for those guys that's, uh, who are sitting there saying, but we've always done it this way and previously it worked, but clearly it's not, it's, it's not working now. It's for recruitment search firm owners uh, so recruitment and search firm owners and directors only. It is, you, you've got to be either the owner or the director as well. You've got to be ambitious, you've got to be prepared to roll your sleeves up and, and put the work in. Um, typically our clients have, have a certain amount of experience, but if you've got no experience, it's, it's still going to work for you if you want to take your business to the next level. And, and who's, who's it not for? It's not for those individuals that think, I can just attend this thing and after 48 hours be, uh, being uh, at, at this event, um, that's it and, and all my problems are solved. It's not for those individuals that think, yeah, but my business is different. Or yeah, but marketing isn't gonna work because my clients are somewhat sophisticated and they don't, they don't go for that kind of thing. Um, it's not for those people that aren't prepared to ruffle a few feathers. Look, here's the thing, you're going to do some marketing. I can tell you now, almost guaranteed, you're going to piss off some of your competitors. You need to take that on the chin. If, if that bothers you in any way whatsoever, I, I'd honestly say this isn't for you. If, you. if your ambition is to be liked and loved by everybody, this clearly isn't, isn't for you. I think that's the, the sort of main price of the people that, who it's not for, Drew. Okay, and can you give us a bit more detail about what you're going to cover in a day? What can we expect? Uh, over the course of the two days, what we're going to get out of it when we leave. Right. So we're going to look at uh, 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 something called permission marketing. Um, permission marketing, where we're going to share with you how you can get clients to raise their hand and indicate they have some interest in what you're going to do. Um, there are four main reasons why a client won't buy from you right now. The first one is they have no need for what you do. That's kind of kind of makes sense. If they've got no need for your offering, um, no matter what you say or do, they ain't gonna buy from you. If they do have a need, they probably don't know you. If they know of you, they don't like you and uh, or trust you. So over the four days, we're gonna share with you how you can get a client to raise their hand and indicate they have a need and what you do, then how you get them to like you, trust you, and want to do business with you. So much so ideally, Drew, that a lot of our clients say that they, they get to a situation where their clients actually want to buy from them more than they actually want to sell to them, which is a lovely position to be in. So we're gonna, show you, we're gonna take you through the process and you know, there's some, there's some uh, methods you can use where you can actually drive people to your calendar. There's some software available that you can send out to them and say, hey, book an, book an appointment with me to discuss your search needs. I, talked, I touched on this earlier, but this is happening right now with your competitors where they, they, they go to work in the morning, they look into the calendar and they've got people booked into their calendar wanting to discuss their, their, their search needs and recruitment needs. Brilliant. And everything, everything as well you're going to be sharing has been tried, tested and proven to work for search firm owners, recruitment, for, recruitment firm owners all over the world as well. So none of what they're going to get is, is based on, on, on guesswork or theory. It's all stuff that is working in the market right now, bringing clients in for uh, recruitment search for owners in the market right now. Yeah, it's a really good point. Um, and in fact, by the way, just, just as an aside, if anybody says to you, look, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, um, I've never done it before, but why don't you invest thousands in doing this and see if it works for you? I'd, I'd again, run for the hills. Everything that we're gonna share with you is, is being used by your competitors somewhere in the world, you know, absolutely everything. Um, so kind of, people say, oh, you're very confident about this, Terry. Well, I'd have to be an imbecile not to know this stuff. It's just, you know, Drew and I, we've seen it literally thousands of times working for the recruitment and search firm owners from all over the world. Um, and with recruitment and search firm owners who have a wealth of experience, certainly a lot more than, than Drew and I put together. Have, you, know, uh, you know, between the two of us, we've got something like 30 years experience in this industry. Well, some of these guys have got more than that uh, experience, kind of experience and they get some great results using these methods. Great stuff. So again, you can find all the details uh, below this page. Terry, again, thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing. Excellent. Until next time, guys, take care, take action, and be relentless.